Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Eric, for that wonderful reading, and Wayne for those wonderful songs, and for the men, and Will, and the rest of the men gathering around the Lord's table, and and um, handing out the, the bread and the fruit of the vine, and for the prayers, and all the wonderful voices uh, being brought up to God. It's it's a wonderful day. It's been a wonderful week. I know we were getting the rain that we need, and I know, um, I don't know if you've been praying for it, I'm sure you have, but I have, and I know those in the Central Valley of California and other places have been praying for rain, and, and God has given us that blessing. We've had a lot of rain lately, and we just said, hey, keep coming. We'll, t we'll, we'll take more, Lord. Thank you very much. Good to see um, everyone here today. It's always good to be here with you as we worship uh, our Father in heaven. I say this every week. I'm going to say it again. There's no better place to be than to be right here with you, right here with our family, the family of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and worshiping God and, and lifting one another up. I know that I'm always lifted up when I'm here, so it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's good to see the Thurmans with us today, and Chuck and Stephanie, great to have you. He will be filling in for me. Hopefully my, my um, uh, surgery this Friday is going to take place, and uh, I'm praying for that. I hope you've been praying for that, and he'll be with you for the next uh, three weeks after um, after next Friday, Friday and Christmas Day, and then uh, January 1st. And and so um, Chuck's a great man, a great preacher, and and um, we're so thankful that he's willing to uh, come in here. And I thank him for filling in uh, for me. And I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate your thoughts and 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 your prayers. I had somebody uh, say, "Didn't you already have your surgery?" I says, no, I says, that was just the, the, the CT, and then they had to do the other thing that they had to do, and I said, but the surgery, the surgery's coming, so uh, none of us like to ha have these things, but, but when they fix us, that, that's what we look forward to, and that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to having that taken care of so I could actually eat in comfort. You know, I'm eating today. I, I mean, I haven't been in pain, and, and this pod, look, I thought I wasn't going to be here today. And so I'm eating. So I'll just take it easy, though. Like, like Charlotte said, be careful. Don't, don't overdo it. I'm not going to overdo it. So wonderful to see you all here with us today. You're visiting with us. We're so happy that you're with us today. And you're always our honored guests. And so come back and be with us. You know, um, 2006, a movie came out. And um, I don't remember if I watched it in 2006. It might have been shortly after. I don't know if you've seen this movie. The Ultimate Gift, and it's just a wonderful movie. It's a Fox family, uh, faith family movie, and so it's very clean, and it's got such a great message, and um, it's starring um, James Garner. I, James Garner used to be one of my favorite actors when I was younger, and, and he does a wonderful job, and um, Drew Fuller, uh, Abigail Breslin did a wonderful job. Brian Dennehy, Dennehy is in this movie, um, but anyways, this, it's about uh, Howard uh, Stevens, and that's um, and that's uh, James Garner. He, he, he's his, they call him Red, and and he's like the patriarch of a a billion dollar corporation. And uh, before he he dies, he he does a video, and he does this video for his grandson Jason, Jason Stevens, and he does this, and he does this video for him to um you know to to go through, and you know the family the, the family are just all about money, you know the family's all, and he was all about money. But Red figured, you know, he's got a chance. The family doesn't have a chance, you know. I mean, as in wealth, they're going to have their wealth. But um, so he goes and 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 he goes through this video with uh, Jason. Has to every month he has to see a new challenge that he has to he has to go through a a, a new thing um, that he has to accomplish. And you know, um, he wasn't just going to hand him his inheritance. He knew that if he just handed him over a million dollars or whatever it was going to be, that, that would ruin him. And so as he starts out, he says that. In the video, he says, you know, he's not going to give him uh, anything. And he says, I knew it. And, you know, he starts to walk out. And then he hears Red say something that piqued his interest. You know, something about this ultimate gift. You know, in order to receive it, he has to go through these 12 separate assignments uh, that he must accomplish. And it has to be to the satisfaction of his attorney, Red's attorney, Mr. Hamilton. What a wonderful um, uh, character that uh, he played 
in this movie too. I highly recommend it. Go see it if you can. Rent it if you if you can. So Mr. Hastings and Long has to like uh, be satisfied with with Jason as he goes through these um these twelve assignments that he has to ultimately to to get the ultimate uh, gift. And so um so he uh he takes the challenge. You know he, he's curious and he goes through that challenge and um. And eventually, I, I won't give away anything, but if you want to see it, so it's a wonderful movie. You know, um, you think about these gifts, there's, there's these gifts in that, and I think about me and Christmas time, uh, you know, Christmas used to be about the gifts, you know, especially, you, you, you know, the, the, the young ones here, Christmas is about waking up in the morning and opening your presents, you know, that's what it was about, um, you know, and I think about the ultimate gift that I've received in Christmas. Can you think about the time where you got an ultimate gift? Like, you know, I, I, I wanted this, I wanted this, and then one morning, you know, I've been asking for this Star Wars. It's like the Star Wars Tower. It's pretty big. And it had the, you know, the Star Wars movie where they were caught in that, like, trash compactor, you know, and so it had that in there. I was thinking, that's so cool, you know, and you could actually go like this with the toy, and and I, I didn't know if I was going to get it because it was kind of big, and I, and I wake up Christmas morning and, Mom, Dad got me the ultimate gift, you know, and I was, I was so, so excited. I think that was in 77 or, or 78, and um, you, th you think about those gifts, you know, but what, what is an ultimate gift today for you? If you could sit here and think about what would be an ultimate gift, would it be something material? Or would it be, you're thinking right now, spiritually? You know, for me, Christmas now today is is about the gifts that money cannot buy. I mean, I'm I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I like to receive gifts, you know, but it's more about those other gifts that we're going to talk about uh, t this morning. Th those gifts that um, you don't need money for these gifts. So we're going to in the movie. It starts out with these little gifts that he has to perform. It gets to the ultimate gift, but this morning we're going to jump right in to the ultimate gift. We're going to jump into this ultimate gift. The, the ultimate gift is available for all. It's available for everybody. In the movie, the ultimate gift was only available for Jason Stevens because his uh, Red's two sons, um, and you know they don't say their name, it doesn't matter, and the wife, um, his ex, or his wife, his, his widow, and then his daughter, uh, they were all about being rich. They're all about the money. They're all about the oil. They're all about the stocks. That's when they actually go sit down. Even at their fu his funeral, they're being disrespectful. And when they go sit down, it's like, what did he leave me? He better have left me the company. He better have left me $500 million. You know, they were waiting to see what they were left. Jason to Red was the only one who was worthy. The only people who are not worthy of the ultimate gift today are the ones who decide they're not worthy of the ultimate gift. You think about that. To Jesus, they were worthy. For Jesus, they were willing to die for. But to them, they need to understand that God wants them to come to Him. That gift is, is, is waiting for everybody. Those who want the ultimate gift, you don't have it, why don't you have it? You go get it. You go get it today because it's waiting there for you. Have you ever given somebody a gift that, that disrespected you? Have you ever given somebody a gift that was just bent on your destruction? They, they, they discourage you all the time? Think about if that was us with Jesus. Would he, if he was that way, if he was like, well, they're not good to me. They, they, they've said this to me. I'm not going to die for them. But see, we don't have a Savior that way. Our Savior died for all. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Who did He give? He gave His only begotten Son. That's how much He loves you. That He gave the ultimate gift. He gave Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus Christ, His Son, to His enemies. He gave Jesus to come to this world to be mocked, to be scourged, to be beaten, to 
be treated so badly and to be killed on the cross. He gave His only begotten Son. And we think about that, that Jesus died for you and I. Jesus died for the ungodly. Before I came to God, just like you, before you come to God, we are enemies of the cross. Before we come, we are still in our sins. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us before we were even a thought, before we were in His head. He knew we were going to be here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 states, For while we are still helpless, while we are still sinners, at the right time Christ died. And this is for the ungodly. Now we know what we hear a lot during this time of year. There is this holiday, Christmas time. People will say, Jesus is the reason, or the, yeah, the reason for the season. And you know, that's only partially correct. Because when we think about it, Jesus is the reason for every single season. Jesus is the ultimate gift, and he's that gift that keeps on graciously giving every single day. We, we do not know when Jesus was born. We don't celebrate uh, Christmas as his birth. I'm not going to ridicule anybody who does. I'm not going to do that. I don't think we should do that. But we don't do that. We don't do that. The scriptures give us some evidence that since the shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night, Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, that his birth is most likely uh, during, the, um, during the warmer months. But we don't know. I don't think it was during the cold months. I don't know how, when it's cold there or not, but scholars have said that uh, sometime in the summer, sometime in the early fall, that he was most likely born. But we do not know that. We just know about his miraculous birth. Isaiah prophesied about that uh, some 600 years before the Messiah came. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, and also in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. And then we get into Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. The Bible tells us now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, was as follows. When, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So we see this gift. And this gift wasn't just at the birth. You think about Jesus as eternal. Jesus always was. Jesus was part of the creation. All things were created through Him and by Him. He's been that gift for mankind. But when this baby came into the world, we see that we've had the greatest gift ever given to man. Think about Mary at this time. Think about Mary as, as Jesus was being held. You know, it talks about Jesus being in the manger. Think about her holding her baby boy, not realizing what was going to come and take place. Not realizing she's holding the Son of God. She's kissing the Son of God. She's holding the baby that's going to, to go about and, and take God's message to the world. She's holding the baby that's going to go walk on water. She's holding the baby that's going to, to give the blind their sight back. She's holding the baby that's going to heal the sick, going to raise the dead. She had no idea what Jesus was really going to do. Ladies, could you imagine your baby boy? Can you imagine that you knew that your baby boy, maybe now it's your grandson, was going to be treated the way Jesus was? That you knew that was coming. You knew that he was going to be beaten. You knew that he was going to be scourged. You knew that he was going to have the thorn of uh, crown just dug into his skull. That he was going to look like a bloody mess. Can you imagine what Mary was feeling as she saw her baby boy? She didn't know that this baby boy was going to be the one to come to save men and women from their sins. Look at Matthew chapter 1, 21. It says, And she shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For it is he who will save his people from their sins. 
Because the birth of Christ, we have the good news. We have the gospel. We have the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Chuck is going to be preaching on the gospel of the kingdom next week. And I get to listen to that. I won't get to listen to that probably on Sunday, but I'll be able to listen to that. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to get too much into the gospel because I don't want to uh, take anything from him. But without that birth, we wouldn't have the gospel. We wouldn't have the ultimate gift. We wouldn't have the Savior of the world. We would not have hope, would we? We would not have the one who came here to save us from our sins. We'd still be in bondage to the devil. Can you think about having no hope? There's people in this world today who have no hope. That's what they think. Where they live, what they have. They need Jesus, yes. That's their hope. That's their hope. I can't even imagine not having hope, not having our Christ, not having our Savior. So here we see that this ultimate gift that's been given to the world. You know, Jesus, he's, he's, he's not a set of a, assignments we have to go through, like a, like a checklist that we have to go through. Anybody can come to him. Anybody can be blessed by these gifts. All they have to do is come to him and learn from him and abide what he wants them to do. That is available for you and I. Is, is available, he's available for the worst of sinners out there. You can think of the worst kind of sin that's taking place. He's available to them. But it is only all who abide in God can receive the ultimate gift. In the movie, Jason Stevens, he would not receive this ultimate gift if he did not uh, abide by what Red Stevens had told him that he needed to do. If he, if he just messed up one of those, those days, or I should say the weeks or the months, one of those instructions, if he did not do it, or if he messed it up, he got nothing. He had to re- accomplish what was instructed to him. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. When we, when we go over to 1 Peter chapter 1, and we see verse 2, It says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with His blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Yes, Jesus is God's glorious grace to mankind. You know, grace is getting what we do not deserve. We don't deserve God's grace. He gives that to us. It's a a free gift. We look at the definitions of grace. We know we've heard that. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. Jesus is the free gift given to the world. Nobody could earn this grace. Nobody could work for this grace. Nobody could pay Him back. We could also look at grace as God's riches at Christ's expense. I heard this definition too. Grace is what everyone needs, what nobody deserves, but only God can provide. I like that. Peter said, we are chosen by the sanctifying work of the Spirit. We're not predestined as in, as in a certain amount of people are going to be saved, Why all these other people, no matter what they do, sorry, you didn't, you didn't win the lotto. It's not that. It's not talking about that. It is by God's prognosis. God knew He was going to build His church. He, he knew that He was going to send Jesus for the sin of man. He knew Jesus was going to be the one that had to come here to redeem men from their sins. God sent Jesus to come and redeem and to sanctify those who are willing to obey Him. See, it was His preemptive plan to save man. 
It wasn't an afterthought. It wasn't like, "Uh uh-oh, what am I going to do now? I think I'll just send Jesus. I'll send my son. That was already in his plan from the beginning. We could read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7. There's other scriptures. And Paul in Ephesians chapter uh, 1, verse 3 through 6, he, he, I, I love this passage. There's so many. But in Ephesians 1, 3 through 6, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He's blessed us with what? He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. We can only be that way because of God. We can only be that way because He shed His blood. He went to that cross. Otherwise, we would not be holy and blameless before Him. And then it says, in love, verse 5, He predestined us to adoption as sons. Yes, we are all sons of God. With a little less, of course. And daughters through Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace. There's that word, that beautiful word, grace with which He favored us in the Beloved. Favored us? How do you favor us? We favor us in our obedience. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22 and 23. Also, God grants another, another beautiful gift that God grants abundant mercy upon those who repent, upon the penitent heart. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. It's very similar to grace, isn't it? Just worded a little differently. Have you shown someone or something mercy? You see a spider and you squash it? I say to Tracy, if he's in my house, he's dead. But I have, and she said, why are you doing that? Kill him. I have grabbing a, you know, grabbing, that's a word. I have grabbed Tupperware, and I have released a spider. Something was in my heart to say, that little guy gets to live one more day. I'm going to give it mercy. And you think about children, you, you think about children and, and, and how merciful they are until you get a little boy with a magnifying glass and some ants there. Right? Guys, have you ever done that? I did that to a scorpion in, in, in Nevada. A scorpion, I, then I put him in the microwave. I, this is terrible. I put him in the microwave. Then I stopped the microwave after 10, 15 seconds. He was still alive. I said, you know, I mean, how evil of me, you know. Put one. I, mean, I was young, so I released that scorpion. And then I heard later on the news there's a scorpion like eight feet. I was just kidding. You know, and, and then I just, I had mercy on this scorpion. I let it go. Mercy. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, is, God has great mercy, and because of His mercy, He gave us a new life. We have a new life in Jesus Christ. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. This new life brings us a living hope through Jesus Christ's resurrection from death. Not happen without the resurrection. Sadducees, there's no resurrection. Sorry about your luck when you face Christ, when you face God one day. Without that resurrection, we are not going to get that ultimate gift. And He died for us. And He's granted us His grace and His mercy. Yes, our God is a merciful God. Psalm 86.5 states, He is abundant, abundant in His mercy for all who call upon Him. Abundance of mercy. Ephesians 2, 4, Paul states God is rich in His mercy. It's another, another uh, word for abundance. Rich in His mercy. He is full of compassion and mercy, James chapter 5, verse 11. God grants mercy toward them that fear Him, Psalm 103 and verse 11. That Jesus, that, that, that other beautiful gift, we think about grace. We couldn't have grace and we couldn't have His mercy without His death. Without that blood being shed at the cross. Shed His blood so we could receive the ultimate gift. 
By the precious blood of Christ, we have redemption in Christ. We have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Colossians chapter 1 and 13, I believe. Shouldn't we all be thankful for God's grace and mercy? Shouldn't we all be thankful that we have a way to be saved from our sins? We have a, a way to be taken out of bondage. The bondage of the the devil, and brought in to Christ where we're saved from sins. And we have obtained salvation in our obedient faith. We continue in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 and 5. He writes, To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. There's salvation ready. That ultimate gift is ready for all who are faithful, who are willing. to Just go get it. It's a gift for you. If you had a million dollars waiting for you, would you deny it? You say, here it is. It's right over here. This is what you got to do. It's not really hard what you got to do. You got to get in your car. You gotta drive to this destination. You gotta get out. You gotta walk up. You gotta open up the box, make sure that's what it is. Oh, there it is. And you go home and you got a million dollars. Would you do it? Who wouldn't do that? You're not, you're not being greedy. It's a gift, right? You gotta go get it. Ultimate gift is there for you. God gives us so many great gifts. Great gifts that would not be. Um, that wouldn't really matter. I mean, you could have these gifts without having Jesus, but what do they really matter? Let's look at these gifts. All good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, James chapter 1 and verse 17. And I'm going to say the gift of love because Jesus is love. God is love. 1 John 4, verses 8. And behind that comes these other gifts. Love is the greatest. The Bible tells us that out of faith, hope, and love, if you don't have love, what does it matter with your faith? What does it matter with your hope? So we see that love. Love's got to be the motivator of these things that we're going to look at. Love caused God to send His only begotten Son. So God so loved the world. He loved you. He loves those who deny Him. He loves those who hate Him. He sent Jesus for them. Love. God so loved the world, John 3.16. What a beautiful passage. A golden text, they say of the Bible, because if there's no love, nothing else matters. Anything in life that is good, that is honorable, that, that is desirable, it's all based on love. So let's make love our motivator. As we go through these uh, Quickly, these, these gifts, and we'll be done. Remember at Christmas time these gifts, but remember past. Remember all through the year about these gifts because they're free. And they're, and, they're, and they're blessings, beautiful blessings from heaven. First of all, let's look at the gift of labor. The gift of labor. Think about that. So many run from work. I've ran from work before in my life. I'm not proud of it. My dad would be like, oh, come here. Ah, I want to go play. I want to show you something. You know, but people are running from, from work, especially if the work is hard, right? You, you have a lot of people out there. You, ha you have companies right now, they're hiring for 16 an hour, and it's hard to get people to come in to work. Why not? Have you ever heard this phrase? Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. That's a beautiful thing, and that's true to a certain extent. But when you think about that, it's not just you're going to find that. Now, you might. You might just find. I did a lot of jobs before I was sent by God, before I listened to Bill Stewart and finally went to become a preacher. I did a lot of jobs, and God didn't want me to do those jobs. You cannot get to that one job that, that just doesn't seem like a job without persevering through a lot of them that you don't like. 
A lot of even a, you you might even hate. See, we we, we look at the the movie and Jason Stevens. He, he never worked a day in his life, and then Red sends him to his friend Brian Dehenny, who who um they're driving you know for like fifty miles or something like that. They're still on his property, so he is you know just mega rich rancher, you know businessman and. And so he sends him to the, to this ranch, and Jason Stevens has to do hard labor. And so he does it, and he listens to him, and he digs the, the holes for the fence. And then when Brian pulls up, or, you know, Gus is his name, when Gus pulls up, this fence is horrible. I could have done a better job. And if I could do a better job, you know that job is bad. You know, and, and, and uneven, and the barbed wire is all over the place, and the holes are still kind of open. and. He just hooked him up to his truck and took, and he was working for a long time. He never worked a day in his life. He had no idea what hard work was, and a lot of people run for that. They're not willing to put it in to sweat, to, to hurt. He says that, you know, in, in that movie, he's been lazy and, and, and he was bored. He had a lot of money. He was a trust fund kid. But when he did the work for Gus, he had a sense of purpose. He had a sense of, of accomplishment, something that he did. It's such a character builder, isn't it? A character builder. And, and he, he was paid for his effort. He said, what's that? You know, he's, he, he was expecting a lot more. And Gus says, that's a paycheck. You know, yeah, $1,500. When he's used to the fat checks from his trust fund, but but it built up his character. It, it gave him a sense of of belonging, a sense of purpose, pride. Work is from God, isn't it? Work is a it's a true gift. God put Adam in the garden to cultivate and, and to to keep the land to till that land. Genesis chapter two and verse fifteen. And then Paul tells us, if you do not work, then you do not eat. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. Yes, we, we don't earn our, our salvation. and we, we, we must abide in Christ and we must bear fruit, though. John 15. You know, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. You know, in your jobs also, but, but think about the work of the Lord and how important that is. Never forget your work in the Lord is never wasted. Never wasted. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Let's look at the second gift really quick, the, the gift of learning. You know, when you labor, you, you learn, yeah, right? You learn from your labor. We, we, we learn through our hardships. We've talked about that. We learn from mistakes, or we hope we're learning from mistakes. You know, James chapter 1, verse, verse 2 and 3. Persevere. In life, if we don't learn, if, if we don't gain that knowledge, then can we grow? We're not going to grow. We basically will have a brain that maybe knows some thoughts and knows some things, but basically we'll be brain dead to God spiritually. And spiritually, when you think about it, it's no different. It's no different if we're not learning. We're not growing. You know, the Hebrew writer states in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 and verse 13, he said, there's a time we all ought to be teachers. There's a time we have to get away from the milk. Throw down that milk cart and get, grab that Weber and throw on the meat. Have yourself a good steak. It's that time where that's what you've got to do. You can't be an infant all your life. Spiritual growth is such a gift and is there for us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. But we have to put in the work. We have to put in the effort. We have to learn. We have to study. We have to grow. Let's look at the third gift. The third gift is the gift of, and I put these together, these, these, these family and friendship. They could be separate gifts. In the movie, Jason Stevens, he, he learns quickly on, on who his friends are, who his true friends are. He didn't have any. Until he met, until he met the lady and her daughter. Her daughter, I won't say anything else about that. If you want to watch it, I want to be a blow the movie. But he got 
to a point in this movie where he can't have any money. And he can't have a place to live. So he goes from trust fund kid to homeless. And so he calls friends. Okay, I know he's got, he owes me money. And he calls his friends, and were, were they his friends anymore? Who are you? <laughs> See ya. He had no friends anymore. He didn't have any true friends. And he has to befriend somebody. He has to bring a true friend home. And he befriends this young girl and then her mom. Oh, what a beautiful story. What a beautiful movie. I'm going to read the book because I know the book gives you a lot more. I watched the movie first. It was quicker. True friendship is built on love. Family, friends, you know, we're, we're, we're a family of God right here, aren't we? Family of God. We are to be there for one another. Hopefully we could trust one another, help one another. Jesus is our greatest friend, isn't he? The Bible tells us that there's no greater friend. No greater love than one who is willing to lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15 and verse 13. Let us be that way with each other. Let us be that way with our neighbors. Let us be that way with the friends we have now and the friends we're going to meet. Be true friends. And for each other, be God's family all the time. Gift number four, the gift of giving. I love in the movie how everything was, was taken from him. But when he got that paycheck from that hard work, he knew of somebody who needed it. He has no money. He didn't say, well, I'm going to take 1000 give 500 He took that whole check and he gave it to the person in need trusting that he's going to keep doing what he's doing and he's going to be taken care of. That's a great thing, isn't it? To be giving to others. And it's not always with our money. It's not always giving, Just you know, I'm just going to send money here and if they need money, I mean, that's important. But it's giving of who we are, giving of ourselves. People at times just need you to give your ear to them. Give your love to them. Listen to them. Be there for them. And Jesus tells us it's more blessed to give than to receive. And then gift number five. There's plenty of them, so I'm not going to go for another 12 gifts. You know, we got to eat soon. But gift number five, the gift of gratitude. How grateful are you today? When we think about Jason Stevens here in this movie, he realizes people who have the most, they have the most or the least thankful. And the ones who have the least are the most thankful. Isn't that amazing how that works? What are we grateful for? God, I thank you. God, I thank you for so much. I thank you for work, the ability to work. I thank you, Lord, for the ability to learn. I thank you, Lord, for your love and the love I have in my life. I thank you, Lord, for my family and my friends. I think about my family and my friends. I have a beautiful family and wonderful, beautiful friends. And I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to give back. I'm going to pay it forward. I'm going to give it myself. We take for granted at times many gifts, don't we? We take for granted these gifts. We take for granted our health. I said, I was talking to Wayne, I said, no more. If something happens, something happens. But no more that, that I'm going to get myself into trouble because maybe it's because of how I live my life and how I eat and how I don't exercise or whatever it may be. I'm going to say, I'm going to take care of my health. My, my friend, um, brother in Christ, you know, Dennis Mew, Dennis Mew um, also does acupressure, and his motto is, your health is your wealth. You know, and we, we tend to take that for granted at times, thinking we're always going to be fine, we're always going to be able to walk and learn and do things, and we got to stop and go, thank you, Lord, for what you've given me. Lord, thank you for the homes we have, for the roof we have over our heads. Thank you for living in America, where people say, and I say it sometimes, oh, we're losing our freedom. You know, are we? Maybe some here and there, maybe because they're trying to do stuff, but we don't have to worry about that. We live in a country where we could be here right now we don't have them coming through these doors. 
and saying, you can't preach that. That's hate speech. It might get to that. We don't have that right now. I am thankful for you all. I really, truly am. I am most thankful for the ultimate gift that's been given to us some 2,000 years ago at the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believe him, John 3, 36, for whosoever obey him shall have eternal life. You'll have the gift of eternal life by just walking each day as his children. Hold that ultimate gift close to your heart. Take the gifts that, 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 you, that you have, and there, there's so many other gifts that you might even be thinking of one right now that I couldn't cover. But labor, labor, I mean, you know, call to action. I like to have call to action. It, it gets me motivated, and I hope it motivates you. Not saying you're not doing any of these things already, but it's some, good to have something that we might go, okay, I'm going to do that more, better this week. I'm going to do more this week. Labor and, and love in his kingdom. Show love in your service. Learn and grow every day in him. Whether it's reading a chapter, whether it's looking at a certain word and look deeper into that word, what does that mean? And you could also write out, write out a chapter. Right? You, you go to Bible Gateway, I mean, you know, you could copy and paste a whole section, a whole chapter. You could go through that and you could, there's so much you could do. Think about that. Tracy's going to start a, um, from Carla Moore and, and her husband, John Moore, the instructor, and she goes through and she, she's now made it into where she just sent it in and they printed out a book for her. And, and the book's a scripture, um, what's it called? Do you know the name? If you need it, I'll, I'll get the name. We're going to do it together. And, and it, so it has this, the passage, whether, I don't know where they're going to start in, to start in Acts. And, you know, you, you, um, you're going to write the scriptures and you're going to, I think it's part of the exegesis on it too. So you're going to dig. You know, I, I know I say that word like you're going, what is that word? You know, I, I, I shouldn't say that word. You know, just digging into the scriptures, digging deeper into the scriptures. You know, and, and, you know, you could do that. And if you want to do that, let me know, and I'll, I'll hook you up with that website, and you could order that book, and you could go through, and you could just say, I'm going to do this a little bit every day. I'm going to do a chapter a day. You know, go at your speed. Go at, you know, it's not something that you, you better do a, you know, a chapter in five hours. You know, and it's nothing like that. It, it's you go at your speed. There's a lot of things you could do. You don't have to do this. It's something that we want to do together. You know, just think of something that you could do that's going to help you learn more and help you to grow more, whether it's reading or writing. A lot of times when you write it out, you, you, you pick up things that you miss when you're reading. Cherish family and friends. You probably already do. Spend time with them. I can't believe that when I look at pictures and I'm like, that was 20 years ago? You always think, we have more time later. We have more time later. We'll get together. We'll do, we'll, we'll do this. And all of a sudden, it's 10 years. Or it's 15 years. Time just goes. Cherish the time you have with your family, with your friends. Be there for them. And then give to God. Give to others. Give to the, as much as you can to His work for His glory. And then five, be thankful. Be grateful. And then if you want, make a list. Write, write today, th this week, write a list and, and, and just write maybe 10. 10 things that you're grateful for. I'm sure you're, you, you'll have a lot more than 10. You'll be like, wow, Lord, you've really blessed me. The lesson is yours today. We know you know about the ultimate gift. We study it. We study him. Every time we come together, Wednesday night, Sunday mornings, the sermon at home, the ultimate gift is there. And if you don't have the ultimate gift, I want to ask you, do you want the ultimate gift? And if you don't want the ultimate gift, why don't you want the ultimate gift? It's waiting for you. Come. Come and get it. Obey Christ. Follow Him. You're suffering with whatever may be going on in your life right now. We've had people coming forward lately and coming forward and, and just saying, I need prayer for this. And that's a wonderful thing. You need prayer for something, don't sit there. Come forward and we'll pray together. Come as we stand.